Carter. Here they are at number 10. With the 10th uh, pick in the first round, the Cincinnati Bengals select Willie Anderson, tackle Auburn. The New Orleans Saints are next on the clock. Yeah, so Willie Anderson in a pick that makes a, a great deal of sense for the Cincinnati Bengals, who once had a tackle by the name of Anthony Munoz that played pretty well for them over a course of years. And here's their history and offensive line, first-round picks. They really, in the late 70s and the early 80s, had one of the first, even bigger than the Hogs, huge lines, which right. is one of the reasons they made it to the Super Bowl then in 81. Of course, Munoz and Remington and Big Blados didn't really turn out as well, but Munoz is arguably as good as any that ever played the position for Willie Anderson to play tackle remember this is a team that that goes long this is a team with Blake at quarterback with Darnay Scott and Slim Pickens at wide receiver and the fine tone end Tony McGee tight end they need a little more time for Blake to throw those moon rockets that he threw up with so much success and I got to think that just adds to the potency of that offense let's go up to Bristol with uh, Chris Fowler and company and tell us about Willie Anderson, who certainly is another one of those 320-pound guys who can move. Yeah, he can move. He does break the string of three consecutive Big Ten players, five of the first nine players coming from that conference. But Mike Godfrey, Willie Anderson, a guy who was all SEC as a sophomore, takes a pretty special player, especially at the offensive line, to do that. Well, he came out early, but you got to look back at his high school career. He was an excellent basketball player, so he is a great athlete. So you're looking at a pretty good athlete here with a big body. Let's take a look at Willie Anderson here as a left tackle and pass protection. Doesn't come off the ball real quick here, but still his big body is able to block on pass protection. Now, the one thing that makes him an interesting player is that his offensive line flip-flops, so he played both sides. Here you see him coming from the left tackle spot pulling and blocking. His offensive line coach is Rick Trickett, who's an excellent offensive coach at Auburn. Now he puts him on the other side. From the right side, now he pulls in a good block in the hole. So he has the ability to run, but he's played both sides. And that's a real advantage for a college kid coming into the pros that he's played both sides of the ball. Willie Anderson says he had unfinished business in college, but he decided to come out. He could have perhaps been, many feel, next year's Jonathan Ogden, a top two or three pick if he'd stayed, but the money obviously there at number 10. That's the decision he's made. Let's go back now to Dallas now and Chris Myers. Chris? Yeah, Chris, I talked to Dave Shula yesterday. This was the guy he wanted all along to help out the offensive line. Willie Anderson is just 20 years old, but Dave Shula himself worked him out, met with Anderson and his family. And what impressed him most was that he was a, a yes sir, no sir kind of player, very disciplined, his mother keeping him in line. He wears a size 19 shoe, and although he's a young player, Shula was impressed with uh, the, some of these specifics you and Mike Godfrey just talked about, and also his ability to take coaching and learn well. Shula hoping he can help block for Kajana Carter, who Dave told me was given the full go-ahead this week and was at passing drills with Jeff Blake and the Bengal wide receivers down in Orlando. So Dave Shula and the Bengals get the guy they wanted, Willie Anderson. Now let's go back to Chris Berman in New York. All right, Chris, thank you very much. No question the Bengals have trouble stopping people with the football, but now we have a tackle to go with those receivers we talked about, Joe, and the quarterback, Blake, and what they hope will be a healthy and very productive Kajana Carter. Absolutely. You have one of the most exciting teams to go buy a ticket and watch in the National Football League if it all plays out for them. And they've made some acquisitions in the offseason to help them out on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, they've gotten some corners in. They're getting better. Big Daddy's getting to be a better football player. I think they're just going to continue to grow. Dave Shula, I think, has done a wonderful job filling the needs of his football team. You need superstars. He went out and got Klingler. Okay, that wasn't a superstar. Copeland, okay, not necessarily as productive as you want. But Dan Wilkinson is beginning to become the big daddy we all thought he would be. Kajana went out real early, but he is definitely going to be an impact receiver. You need at least five stars on offense. Take a look at the Dallas Cowboys. Great wide receiver, great running back, great quarterback. I think Cincinnati is getting close. They have two excellent wide receivers. They have an excellent running back. They've got an excellent quarterback. Now you've got a staple again. This will be the next legacy of Anthony Munoz at the offensive tackle position for the Cincinnati Bengals. This young man will be there a long, long time. Plus, he's got a 35-inch reach. He could touch you from here, boom. Well, I'll tell you what, well, he would keep me away from keep Mel. Away from Mel. <laughs> he's got big shoes to fill if you're talking about Anthony Munoz. I however, think he can do it. But he has size 19 feet. So obviously he's <laughs> capable of right. physically filling the shoes. Willie Anderson, you've liked him all the way. 
I'll tell you, he comes out early as a junior, Chris, but he has three years of starting experience. I think that's important. He's not a guy who's coming in and needs technique work, needs more experience. He's ready to play. Three years of starting experience behind him. He was a great basketball player in high school, averaged 15 rebounds a game. And, of course, the strength factor. That's one area he may need to improve. Of course, he came out a little early, but when you look at the totality of Willie Anderson as a football player, for the Bengals, he's going to fit in at right tackle. They're going to use Melvin Tootin, a kid out of Syracuse from a few years back, at left tackle, move Kevin Shar Sargent from left tackle to left guard, and there at right tackle will be Willie Anderson. So this is an easy transition for Anderson. He won't have that immediate pressure from the left tackle spot. So Cincinnati has uh, rounded out our top ten. The New Orleans Saints are on the clock with just under ten minutes to go. And the first ten have gone this way with much fanfare. Keyshawn Johnson of the New York Jets. Kevin Hardy to Jacksonville. Simeon Rice, his Illinois teammate, went to Arizona. Jonathan Ogden, the big tackle to the Baltimore Ravens. Cedric Jones went to the Giants, which allowed Lawrence Phillips to fall to number six for the St. Louis Rams. Then Terry Glenn, the Buckeyes to New England. Tim Bahakabatuka running back to Carolina. Ricky Dudley, another Buckeye, the tight end to Oakland. Willie Anderson, a Bengal. Stick around. Concert at the same time, <laughs> which kind of it was when the Jets and Giants were on the board. We'll get them around the bend when we go to the second round. So, the New Orleans Saints are on the clock. Seven and a half minutes to go. Let's head up to Bristol and ask uh, Sterling Sharp, where do you think the Saints go here? Because they could go several directions. Um, you know, they're a football team that, that, that needs a little speed in a few places. Where would you go if you're the Saints? If I'm the Saints, I'd go with the speed at the wide receiver position with the most complete guy in the draft, with the best receiver in the draft, with the guy that's going to be the most dependable guy we can probably draft this year, and that's Marvin Harrison from Syracuse. He has done it all. He's stayed in school five years. He knows all the tricks of the trade about playing the wide receiver position. You have a Michael Haynes who can run, and you need a guy that can work the underneath zones that's tough enough to go inside, uses his hands in traffic. Marvin... Marvin Harrison is one is that guy and the one thing that you have to look at Jim Everett getting up in years I think their running game will be okay I think if they get this guy along with the, the tight end and and Michael Haynes on the outside they will be an offense to deal with their defense they got some corner help this year in the offseason I think if they get Marvin Harrison offensively they will be to deal with in the National Football League Chris back to you all right Sterling well I know you like Harrison a lot and certainly his speed and uh, remember that the New Orleans Saints lost a uh, guy that caught a lot of balls last couple of years, Quinn Early. He was signed in the offseason by the Buffalo Bills. He lost Wesley Walls, a fine uh, pass-catching tight end. He went to the Carolina Panthers. You see 81 and 57 receptions. That's a lot of balls that Jim Everett now has to throw to somebody. And uh, the thoughts were, okay, if you don't go wide receiver, do you go defensive back? Because Alex Molden, Oregon, is the guy right here. But they got Eric Allen, who's a, who's a former Pro Bowl defensive back with Philadelphia. They just spent money for Mark McMillan, and the owner, Thomas Pence, says, you were paying all this money for these two guys. Would I go uh, defensive back? I don't think so. They also have a lot of money tied up already in their defensive line. So maybe wide receiver is the spot. Mel, if you're the Saints, where are you going? I think when you look at wide receiver, they have a lead to Ramos, a kid they drafted in the fifth round last year out of Wisconsin. They think he could have been a first rounder in this draft had he gone back to Wisconsin. They think he's a great value pick last year, is going to come on this year and develop. Of course, they have Michael Haynes, and they really like Torrance Small. I think the Molden argument... I think holds up a little more when you factor in that they have to play the 49ers twice every year, they have to play the Falcons twice every year, and you need three cover men to be able to handle the 49er offense and the run and shoot, led of course by Jeff George in Atlanta. Well, let's go down uh, quickly to, to Dallas to Chris Myers, because Chris always has uh, one spoon in the seafood gumbo and uh, has an eye on the Saints. What, what do you think they're <laughs> going to head, Chris? We, uh, we like it spicy in New Orleans. Well, the Saints wanted defense. They came into this draft thinking that way. Alex Molden is their guy from the top. In fact, they, they describe him as an Eric Allen type of player. They wouldn't expect him to start right away, but to play a lot for them because of the kind of offenses that they go up against. And uh, that's the player that they, and the reason they're taking so long on the clock right now is they think they could get him and possibly trade down. They'll entertain offers. The Chicago Bears did contact them earlier about possibly trading up with them. Chicago is interested in another corner in Walt Harris the Saints thinking defense although there's still a running back like Eddie George that's there as well and also here's a did you know for you Chris the first general manager father son in the history of the NFL working the draft Bill Kuharik the new GM of the Saints in charge of this draft and making the final call Joe Kuharik of course his father the uh, GM of the Eagles in the 60s of course that could be a, a did you care I know we care about who the Saints are going to pick we also uh, we'll continue to keep you updated on what the Dallas Cowboys are doing in the war room as you see Jerry Jones, his son Stephen Jones, the uh, vice president of the team helping to operate things for the Dallas Cowboys. Let's now go back to Chris Berman in New York.
It looks like he's working on which eight track to pick out of, out of the uh, out of the stereo deck there. One thing to keep in mind with Alex uh, uh, Bolden is that two spots below her is St. Louis. And uh, remember that um, Alex Bolden's college coach was Rich Brooks at Oregon. Recruited him, played for him until Brooks went to the Rams last year. So maybe Brooks would like to get someone he very well knows at 13. So if the Saints want to be.